and we are live. Yeah. Mike Ellis, <laughs> Unicorn Chef, standing here having a wonderful conversation with our, our Unicorn Chef today, Yevgeny Irchak. We're making a traditional Russian dish, which is fantastic. And I'm very, very, very hungry. Um, what is it called? Plav. Rice pilaf with an incredible kick. So as you watch tonight, do me a favor. If you're cooking along, put your comments up on your social media of choices, hashtag Unicorn Chef. And as you're, as you're doing your cooking and posting your pictures, uh, go visit your local SPCA, donate a couple bucks, donate a little bit of time. They need us. We need them. So anything we can do to help them. And welcome to Yevgeny. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, good. good evening, everybody. My name is Yevgeny. Uh, so uh, today, uh, the charity of my choice is uh, World Central Kitchen. And uh, it's being led by Jose Andres, my personal superhero. So if you would consider donating, I would, we would greatly appreciate it. It's, it's amazing that organization that helps out uh, uh, during the old type of uh, disasters around the world. So, yep, and, and as Mike said, so uh, today uh, we actually will be cooking like one of the, uh, my most favorite dishes, uh, like Russian dishes, which we just call plov. Uh, so as the first step, uh, we'll start uh, searing some of the meat and uh, based on the recipe, like traditionally you can use lamb, uh, uh, like uh, traditionally use lamb, but you can also use any, pretty much any type of meat. And uh, I think Mike, you mentioned uh, before the, before we started that you'll <laughs> use chicken and then it's totally fine. Cool. Uh, so to get started, we'll just put, uh, uh, that show on, on high and, uh, I already put some, uh, uh vegetable oil in there. So like at the point, like when you start seeing, start smoking in a little bit, that's the time to drop uh, the meat in because you want to get it seared and browned as quickly as possible because like meat has a lot of moisture so you don't want to it actually start boiling if the temperature is too low so, so that be... no no continue man I, yeah, I yeah, yeah so, so that will be the first step uh and uh as you can see like i already cut the uh, the meat down uh, i used uh, lamb black uh, for this one uh and uh on the same topic like i'm a huge believer of like uh using old uh old soup to nuts components uh, of meats that you get. So I could, I'll give a couple of tips uh, throughout their uh, conversation. But like, for example, if you get a lamb leg, like there are a couple of things that you can do with that. So like if you have any type of connecting issues, fat or anything like, or anything like that, uh, you can uh, use it uh, and put it in the oil first, just to add some flavor. And also it creates a very good snack. So almost like Spanish chicharrones, but uh, lamb ch chicharrones. So. I don't know if it sounds appetizing or not, but it, it's delicious. Trust me, try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, and the same topic. Uh, so like we uh, for this uh, traditional recipe, we'll be just using uh, like hot water. Like when mm -hmm. we get to that point. Uh, but if you have a bone, like another option as well is that you can uh, use your pressure cooker uh, and create the bone growth out of it, and it will just add additional layer of flavor and utilize another component. So yeah, pretty cool. So normally right. when, you're, when you're heating your oil, do you use that as an opportunity to like have a drink? What, what are you drinking? To? Oh, oh, good segue. Uh, so since we, uh, uh, since I'm using lamp uh, and meats, uh, I feel like that red wine would go well with that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not familiar with this one, but it's uh, Ancient Peaks uh, from California. Uh, it's just a Merlot. Uh, it was under 15 bucks at, at the store. So it should be. Ancient Peaks sounds something like Dolly Parton, to be quite honest. <laughs> For, okay, for yeah, me, yeah, I'm yeah. also drinking red wine, but Australian. I could not get a, I couldn't get a box of wine that would honor you, because I've never, I've never cooked Russian food before, and I'm kind of afraid of you. So, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, Russia in particular is not very famous for wine, but some some of the like former just Soviet republics have pretty good wine, like Georgia, or Moldova, etc. Mm -hmm. But Russia. I'd heard before that um, it, it was only a couple of years ago that Russia had considered beer to be alcoholic. Yeah, it's it's extremely popular, and, and they do have a lot of really good Russian beers. Uh, mm. like they have a lot of very good breweries. All right, so uh, our oil started to smoke, so I will uh, dump the meat in. Okay. Thank you. 
but I've, I've always kind of wondered when you're browning lamb. I've never browned lamb before. When you're browning lamb, do you need to let it sit on the bottom and kind of get a fond going, or do you need to move? Yeah, you actually, it pretty much uh, works the same way as beef. So you really want to uh, keep it in, in place, don't like try to mix it all the time. So like it would uh, like form at least the initial crust on the bottom, and then you try to turn it around. Uh, yeah. there's, there's nothing better than crust on the bottom. Yeah, and I forgot to introduce my sous chef. Uh, oh, where is it? Hey, Alex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So today I brought uh, my older son, uh, Alex, uh, so he will be assisting us uh, throughout their uh, presentation. Uh, so he will be my sous chef. Uh, Alex, say hi. Hey, Alex. You're way bigger than I thought you were sitting down over there. <laughs> You're what, 22, 23? No. 17, 19? Seven, seven, almost eight. Nice. Yeah. You're big for your age, kiddo. You look fantastic. <laughs> I don't know. I'll call you back like when we're ready for the wine. And for searing, you, you do want to have uh, your temperature on high because <laughs> usually like, meat has a lot of moisture and it like, drops the temperature of the oil right away. So. so should we be cooking or should we be chopping vegetables or should we prepare on vegetables or I haven't prepared anything. Oh, yes, uh, uh, good point. So, like uh, the next, uh, we'll uh, uh, use onions. Uh, and for onions, uh, like once the meat is seared, uh, uh, you really need like a rough chop on the okay. onion. Like you don't have to be fancy with your cuts uh, because, uh, like, once we'll start simmer and everything, the whole thing will disintegrate and you know, it will just turn into pure flavor. Uh, so just a simple uh, rough chop with a uh, pretty large chunks. So okay. and that should work. And recipe for the plow on the ingredient side is is really simple. Like you essentially have need to have uh, the same uh, weight of meat, onions, and carrots. And okay. it's very easy to remember. I think I can remember meat, onions, and carrots. Do the onions and carrots go in at the same time, or are they going at different spots? Uh, they will. So we, once the meat is brown, uh, we have to take the meat out first because okay. we, we wanted to incorporate all the flavor uh, into the rest of the dish. Uh, okay. it, 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 like I guess uh, uh, the first we'll drop onions, uh, and it uh, kind of will help to deglaze the uh, Dutch oven as well because mm -hmm. onions will reduce like they will reduce like release a lot of juices and we'll have to like we'll try to scrape the bottom of the uh, batch oven so uh it will incorporate all the flavors into the dish as we put it together but onions will be first we'll caramelize them okay. uh, and carrots will be after that like once the onions are ready awesome okay very cool so tell me about your job you're getting oh what is it you say you do? It's a fairly uh, interesting, uh, I guess, niche like within the cyber threat intelligence. So uh, I currently work for a company, uh, I read the incident response. Uh, so technically we do pretty much everything like from like initial containment of the environments uh, to forensics uh, and all the analysis of data. Uh, but we also get a lot of cases that uh, related to ransomware. Uh, and my team in particular, so uh, I'm kind of responsible for a couple different parts. So on specifically on threat and tell part, uh, like from all the cases that we get, uh, we collect information on all the different threat actors and ransomware variants. Uh, and I also help uh, like and run the uh, negotiations team. So we actually deal with the bad guys uh, trying to get as much discount as we can for our clients. Uh, and for each case, we collect more than 150 data points. And it kind of like help us to mold and strategize like uh, in future cases on how we want to basically achieve the best results. 
So did you choose to do this because you weren't doing well at being a, a dancer, or is this have you always been technically minded? Uh, my uh, like career story is kind of uh, like partially destiny and partially uh, it just through uh, luck. Uh, so I was born in the family of uh, computer scientists. Wow! So cool. my, my both my both parents uh, were like a layer uh, computer scientists, like working back in Russia. So. Yeah. As a kid, I grew up like around mainframes, so playing with punch cards and then doing all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, somehow uh, they had a friend uh, that uh, ran uh, like a, a coding club, like a computer coding club in, in, in the school. And typically they would only take uh, kids that are like ninth or 10th graders to that club. Uh, but they were friends and they made some kind of like secret handshake deal. So like in the third grade, uh, I actually was the only third grader in this club, like learning like basics, how to code and everything else. Wow. So, and since then, uh, like I've been in like IT application development pretty much throughout all, my whole career. Wow. Yeah. Uh, even like when I immigrated to the United States, uh, like I really could speak English, uh, but I already had a couple of years of experience in application development also, like, for a couple of cool, cool companies. So like even though I couldn't speak English, they said like, oh, we don't care. Like you, you have the skills. Like here's the job. So like, it was a very easy transition for me. That's very cool. Um, but Threat and Tell in particular, uh, it was pure luck. Uh, so like, I, I was a member of uh, United States Army Reserves, uh, and uh, during my last deployment overseas, uh, I, I happened to be co-located uh, and worked uh, with a team that did cyber threat intelligence in our uh, cyber center over there. Uh, and I've seen like few presentations that they showed us, uh, and it just blew my mind because I, I couldn't. I, I, before that, I didn't realize that you can actually use like technical indicators and then do a lot of analysis on them and do pivots and like you know, discover all type of like additional information and then like turn it around and help it like with actual operations and what you want to do. Uh, so after that deployment, uh, I talked to a friend. Uh, of mine now that, that actually was doing all those presentations and was able to switch units uh, and join the cyber threat and tell unit uh, team, like, within the US Army. And uh, since then, we worked with some amazing people in the community and just got absolutely addicted. So eventually, my career trend, like, kind of transitions, transition from application development, IT project management, more into like cyber threat and tell. Wow, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Are you in a spot that you love, or is it just a spot that you're good at? No, I, I love my job, and I, I, I guess I, I like the challenge of it because sure. like every day is something different. It's not like you're going to a factory and you crank uh, the crank and you get better. You just like crank it quicker. Like there's so many different aspects, and it includes uh, like you, you have like psychological aspects, like regional aspects, cultural aspects, but then you also have uh, another layer of all this like technical analysis that goes into that. So uh, it definitely makes the job never boring. And uh, the bad guys evolve all the time and we have to yeah. keep evolving with them. And, and, I, and I love that part of the job and that part of the job. I watched, I watched a prison show once where they were, uh, they were being critical of the guards <clears throat> and saying, you know, the guards can't keep top of or can't keep on top of what the, the criminals or criminals, sorry, inmates are doing. And the inmates said, I, I have 24 hours a day to figure out how to fool you. And you have eight hours a day to figure out how to stop me. So I'm at a clear advantage. So I kind of see that as cyber crime, you know, 101. They're always thinking about it. That's my perfect sense. And, and just the sheer scale. So, I mean, on the defender side and our side, we definitely outnumber it uh, because it's so easy to get into the like, ransomware game. Like yeah. you can join like one of their platforms uh, and you can like subscribe and get all the tools and procedures uh, and just start doing it. I, I probably can teach my son. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, like on, on the other side, it, it's just uh, us, uh, cybersecurity analysts, uh, threat and tell analysts, uh, the peer guys, uh, smart guys, and stuff. So how, how's your meet? It's almost done. I think maybe yeah. like one more minute. Like, cool. Closer. I think I'm actually going to pull my chicken to be truthful because it's a little bit more, it's less robust than your delicious lamb. Yeah, I think mine is ready as well, so I'll just pull it out. 
Am I deglazing after the chicken comes out or no? And uh, at that point, we also want to reduce the heat, uh, okay. otherwise the uh, oil might start burning. Cool. I guess this is a dish that you wouldn't do oil and butter with, right? <laughs> yeah, let's get out. Honestly, this pan has so much chicken fun on it, it's so nice. Yeah, I mean, like, as I said, you pretty much can use uh, any meat you want. Uh, the only downside with chicken uh, that it potentially, like, once we'll start uh, simmering, uh, it kind of loses texture a little bit. It doesn't hold it as well as uh, like beef or lamb. Okay. All right, so uh, the next step, uh, we'll use the same oil. We'll just put onions in there uh, okay. to caramelize them. And I, I did drop my heat down to around medium. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. So, uh, and uh, at that point, like we, we kind of want to try to, uh, we kind of want to try to like uh, mix it with the oil that we already have, and uh, sort of scrape the uh, the Dutch oven bottom. Like if there are any like pieces of meat that got stuck, so they wouldn't get burned. Cool. So I'm trying to pull up some fun. Stir that pot, little man. <laughs> and and yeah, for, for Lucas, who's talking a little bit of smack in the chat, you're definitely at two strikes, bud. Definitely. Two and a half. So one half more. That means I ruined Christmas. And I ruined Christmas by showing up. <laughs> with just a mistletoe. We talked about your job, <laughs> so are you going to show up with the baseball bat or? <laughs> so how many onions did you put in? Uh, so, no, I already pre-cut the previous one, so it's, it's about like three hats. Cool. Wow, very cool. All right, and uh, while it's going, uh, so I already preached up uh, some of their carrots as well, uh, but uh, like again, like in, in the in the in the menu and the, in the recipe, I call it julienne. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it a julienne. It's really like rough julienne, Russian julienne. So like, okay. you, you really like want to have uh, like pieces uh, that are like more like sturdy. Okay. Because uh, that way, like during the simmering, uh, they will not completely disintegrate. Uh, and you still will get chunks uh, that will be delicious. So just uh, I clean uh, the carrots and uh, we'll cut them in a second. So you have Danny? Yes. Is this kind of what I'm looking for? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, released a lot of uh, uh, moisture, so like if, if we, we can try to raise the uh, heat up maybe to high for now, okay. so it will evaporate quickly.
So how often do you cook this dish? It's very fair. It's very fair. It's like within my family. Uh, so usually for like any like special occasions, I usually cook that, especially if we have guests. But other than that, maybe at least like once a month. Really? Yeah. And uh, another cool part about it, so uh, typically uh, the dish takes about uh, three, four hours to prepare. Uh, but uh, the longest process is what we're actually doing right now to prepare uh, the whole like whole like simmer mixture with uh, with the uh, meat and vegetables like onions and carrots and spices etc. But uh, that that actually freezes really well. Like in, in Russia, that part called zirvak, and I'll mention again like down the show. But awesome. uh, you potentially can just uh, do it once, uh, like uh, and just double up on all the ingredients, uh, and then freeze half of it uh, for the future, and you cook. Like use the second half for for the dish that you want right now. But if look, if you need to make it quick quickly, just unfreeze it, uh, and it will take you like 15 minutes to prepare a plow, which will be almost as delicious as you would cook it like right there. And is this is this the kind of dish that like tastes better the next day because it's had a whole bunch of time to marry it? It, it, it does actually. Yeah. That's very true uh, because it, it gives us additional additional time uh, for rice uh, to absorb like it. All the flavors from the mixture and everything else so yeah, it's definitely good to go like at least for another like, couple of days so my onions are definitely cooked mine are still going but... and I'll, I'll be honest I, I did do a very brief deglaze because my the bottom of my pan was definitely not getting a happy but it is not burnt for anybody watching. And if anybody watching tweets that it's burnt, I'm literally going to call your mom. I think mine just need like another like minute or two. No, to make sure that they would get like a little bit more yellowish. More can I can I drop in my carrots now, or do I need to take the onions away? Uh, no, like keep uh, keep onions in. So just drop in carrots. Uh, okay. And at that point, you can also add uh, start adding uh, cumin. This is like it's a primary spice that we'll be using. Uh, because uh, like cumin helps to kind of like expand the flavor of the carrots and goes really well with it. So that that's the good time to put in it. But we will hold off on salt for now because it like helps to get the moisture out. We don't yeah. want to really get it like right away. Uh, but but definitely yes, you can add uh, like cumin like once you drop the carrots. In. So people, people in the chat, just so you know, they're talking about prisons now. Those people are crazy. And thank you, Aaron. You look great. I don't at all. And I think Evgeny looks way better than me because he's literally in shape. Like, do you work out? I mean, like, not since COVID started, like I, I used to, but now I'm just like watching what I mean. That's, that's about it. Uh, I definitely want to get back in shape uh, once the whole craziness is over. Okay, well, the onions and stuff smells delicious for the record. I think my onions are good to go, so I'm dropping carrots as well. And Rob, for the record, DoorDash is not showing up. And I'll literally slap you in the face next time I see you. And you know that's going to be soon, so. These people are terrible. So I'm dropping also the cumin spice. Uh, How much cumin are you putting in? Like a tablespoon? Uh, usually it's more? a tablespoon. Uh, I just like the, the that flavor to be a bit more like forward, so. Probably do like one and a half or even two. Uh, it, it's not going to mess up the dish. Like it, it's definitely not going to be like one of those situations where like you're trying something that's like completely uneatable. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, one tablespoon should be good, uh, good enough. So somebody's actually asked a question of you. What is the difference between tanned onions and caramelized onions? Tanned onions. I guess it's different shade, like a, like shades of yellow. Uh, I have no idea, uh, but but yeah, like uh, like essentially, like once you uh, 
uh, start seeing like onions uh, getting like yellowish, like golden. Fair. Golden. Uh, golden color. That, that's my problem. The cumin and carrot just smells so good. Oh, yeah. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. Like, if you're cooking this, I hope you're cooking this at home. If you're not, you're probably a scumbag, but it smells so good. Sous chef. Sous chef is here. Yeah, at that point, uh, we don't, uh, we basically will mix everything together, like all the onions, uh, <laughs> carrots, and, and the cumin spice. Uh, and we just want to make sure uh, that uh, carrots will get a little bit soft. Like, we, we don't need to wait too much time on them to get uh, completely caramelized. Uh, uh, just uh, get some initial heat before we start simmering them to work. And I have to comment that you're using a wooden spoon, and that brings me so much joy. <laughs> Listen, everybody is saying that your sous chef is the star of the show so far. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> And then if you still have uh, your uh, temperature on high, uh, you can probably reduce it to medium now. Cool. Okay, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a father of a very young son, so I'm, I'm very jealous of watching your, your, your kiddo kind of run around and help you. I think it's fantastic. Oh, they're amazing. Like, like once you pass, uh, I think like three year old age, like after that, they become more autonomous. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, like we definitely get much more sleep than we used to. <laughs> so, uh, and, and like if you have two, like they play with each other, and they are absolutely hilarious. Uh, so, so are, are they good? Are they good brothers? Or are they fighting? Uh, they're good brothers. Uh, yeah. they, they do kind of kind of wrestle, like sometimes like escalate, but that, that's typical thing. Like I have a younger brother as well, so it's like it's I'm looking at them. Yeah, that, that's normal. Like it's. Uh, Nobody got killed, nobody got uh, injured, so like they're, they're all good. All right, then uh, the next step uh, we actually for the next step we actually will need hot water. So like okay. if you have a pot uh, or if you want to boil it, uh, do it now. Uh, and uh, uh, like additional way to improve the flavor is uh, as I mentioned earlier. So like if uh, uh, like when you got your lamp with the bone. Uh, if you make a broth out of it, like you can use that broth, or you potentially can use like deep broth if you want to. Uh, but we'll just use the traditional way. Uh, just we'll uh, have the water in and uh, make sure it's boiling. So, is the amount of water that I'm putting together kind of commensurate with the amount of rice I'm going to cook? No, it's you really uh, want to just literally just cover uh, the whole mixture of the onions and carrots. Uh, just, just a little, but like, make sure that it's literally just covered with water, like okay. nothing extra. So you, you don't need to make any additional crazy calculations of like additional inch for it. Just make sure it, it is like fully covered and we should be in a good shape. Because everybody knows bakers are dumb and measurements are ridiculous. That's the only thing I like, uh, like, uh, like, as I mentioned, you know, like eventually I would love to compete on a master chef, but baking part like scares the hell out of me uh, because it's it's really not like cooking when you can like smell taste or look at stuff uh, you it, it's a science like you have to measure everything and if you like like screw up like one part like the whole thing doesn't work so that's why like on the like savory dishes side on like typical like stuff like steaks and everything else you can see smell pay, taste like touch it uh, make sure it's ready like Bacon, uh, it's, it's <laughs> I think, um, those are coming along good. I mean, bakers are kind of like hipsters for me. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, everything was supposed to be like precise, like, um, like everything's supposed to be like measured and like, yeah. Like, go, go sit down at Starbucks with your fixie and shoosh. I wish I wish there was a lady here named Shannon. <clears throat> she's very much into baking, and I'm, I'm actually quite afraid of her too. She's she's a, she's a scary one. So I, I hope she's not watching because she would punch me in the face. How's your wine? It's pretty good. 
Yeah. Okay. Nice. Good price. <laughs> Lucas says baking is a science, but cooking is an art. Oh, I agree. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That doesn't mean Lucas doesn't have two and a half strikes anymore just because he said something poignant. All right, so it looks like my carrots are starting to get a little bit soft, so it, it, it's a good uh, point uh, for us to start seasoning it. So at this point, uh, we want to use some salt and season okay. it. Uh, we also will drop uh, the full head of onion, and uh, you don't need to do anything with it other than just like take out her skin uh, and just like right. the garlic, thing. right? So what? You said you said onion. That's garlic, right? Garlic. We ah. <laughs> <laughs> pull head of garlic in. So, are you putting in enough garlic to kill a vampire, or just enough to make it flavorful? No, it. it, it uh, since like we, we don't crush it, we don't like uh, disintegrate it before we put it in. Uh, like yeah. it adds a very good flavor. Like once it's simmering, uh, and then we'll just take it out. So like we, we don't really ah. need to eat it. So it, it will just add all the flavor uh, without too much work. We just put the full head in. So we will season the mixture. So this is kind of like a bouquet garni. You're you're just gonna season it and take it away. Yep. Now we'll drop uh, our meat back in. Sweet. Nothing like dropping the meat back in. Okay. I have to say, like right now, I could eat this out of the bowl or like out, out of the pot. Seriously. Yeah, it definitely smells delicious. My goodness. And it's only at the beginning. <laughs> Wait till we are done. Like I, I truly do think of a time of, of, of putting in like, or sorry, getting a, a ridiculous kind of crusty bread and just eating bread and this together. Like bread and butter, like too much butter, like enough butter for a fat dude like me to say, that's too much butter. Yeah, if you would not. If you would not use rice, yeah, there's definitely a way to go. Like once mm. it's done with simmer, and like it definitely will go very good, on, like on crostini or any type of uh, bread toast or anything like that, because it, it's delicious and it already starts to smell delicious. Uh, so uh, I mixed everything together. So like now we have uh, like meat, carrots, onions, uh, uh, one kind of garlic in there. Uh, it's not in the recipe. Well, it's optional in the recipe. Uh, but if you want to be fancy, uh, you can also use saffron. The saffron will will like just like bump this dish to another level. And the saffron, uh, uh, one cool trick that I learned from one of my former coworkers, uh, like, uh, she said that uh, instead of adding saffron uh, directly into the dish, you really want to uh, put it uh, into heavy cream, like a half cup of heavy cream, wow. it's like for 30 minutes. And it helps to like extract all the flavor out of it and will help to incorporate that back in the dish. So I do have that. So I had it for about an hour right now in heavy cream. And I'll just dump that as well. See, you didn't tell me about this at all. So now you're being all fancy. And I have to be here all redneck. See, this is your plan, Yevgeny. This is your plan. Well, we're all supposed to learn something here, right? Oh. <laughs> right so, uh, the saffron with heavy cream in. Uh, and now we'll add uh, uh, the hot water. And as I said, like, you literally just want to make sure that water covers all the mixture. So just uh, cover to the top, right? Yeah, so just make sure like all the ingredients are literally just covered. So okay. Don't go over it, that will be sufficient. Now, if you added the cup water, like it should be like boiling. Yeah. Uh, so we'll reduce it back to medium right now. Uh, I, ideally, uh, with this dish, uh, you really want uh, it to simmer on low, maybe like for 45 minutes at least. Okay. Uh, but for the purpose of the demonstration, we'll just cut it down to 15, 20 minutes, uh, uh, and we'll just keep it on medium. That should be good enough. Like I said, this weekend it did work and it was delicious. So. 
so is, is this really one of those dishes the longer that it kind of sits the better it's going to be at the very end um or is like yeah. 45 minutes like a good simmer time but you don't really want to overdo it because then uh, your meat will disintegrate like you still want to make sure that the meat will keep its texture like that you brown uh, and will still be look like meat pieces <laughs> uh but but yeah i mean like typically it's like 35 minutes to an hour like up on low that's uh, that should work just fine uh and yeah as i said like we will just uh cut it down to uh, 15 minutes and i'll just cover it up just to go with a little bit quicker for us uh and now like once you're done with that uh we can switch uh, to our side salad uh, and it's very simple and very traditional so uh, usually like, when you cook cloth uh, uh it's uh, it's very fatty uh because in traditional uh recipe like, you use uh, like lamb fat uh, you render it and you cook all, all your meats in there and then you add all the vegetables in it so it's really kind of like a fatty dish uh and traditionally uh like in russia like uh, it's been served with a very simple salad which is just uh, onions uh, and tomatoes uh and it like you, you like uh, added uh, like olive oil to the resume oh, to the recipe uh, but like you, you don't even need to add that uh, because it's just like a, a little bit uh, like side salad just to cut through the fat and help them. like it makes it much more tasteful I guess. Lucas and Ben will, re will recognize that a good salad is like tossing their salads. Uh, okay. Uh, so and for this uh, for this side salad uh, the, the only thing we need is really just uh, tomatoes and onions uh, and we'll just season them with uh, salt and pepper uh, and for this one for the onions uh, you really want to cut them uh like thinly uh and kind of cut yeah am I, am I doing anything with the rice right now just so just so i'm getting anxiety about rice what is that do i need to do anything with my rice right now or no 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 Keep your anxiety to yourself. I, I burnt rice once and people have never let it go because they're jerks. And for, and for rice, like we do need to wash it. So like if you uh, you haven't done that, so like let's do that first then. Okay. okay. So like get one cup of rice. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you want to rinse it in, in cold water uh, and just keep it in cold water for now. Uh, okay. like we will need it in about uh, 15, 20 minutes. That's a good reminder. I will do that as well. And I'm washing it just till it's clear. So, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, and then about rice so like we do want to uh, keep it in the water for a little bit but we don't want to keep it in the water for too long uh, because otherwise it will start absorbing just uh, blend water essentially in, in fact. and instead of that uh, we want rice to absorb all the deliciousness uh, all the juices uh, that we currently have uh, in the dash oven and it will be yeah, delicious so while, while you do that We'll just hold off on the uh, salad part for now. Let me find the plate. Uh, one second. And I will say, a basmati rice or long rices, brown rices. Yeah. You should always be you should always be washing your rice off yes and it helps uh like a piece of rice not to clump together so you definitely want to wash it uh, before you do anything so i'm actually using long grain jasmine so it's actually relatively clean Tough on my water, but my water is pouring clean now. 
<coughs> Cloudy water is dirty water. What's that Rock and Hide song? If you wash your hands in my dirty water. And if you wash your feet, my dirty. Was it a favorite Canadian song? Like <laughs> you know, it was a terrible band. And I, I think Rock and Hide, I think Hyde was responsible for something to do with Metallica. And then they, they came out with this band and this one famous song <clears throat> called Dirty Water. Look it up on YouTube. It's actually a relatively catchy song. Um, yeah, I'll have yeah. to look it up. And, and as I said, like, I actually was not born like neither in the US nor in Canada. <laughs> so I missed out on a lot of things. Uh, like, and like some of the references that uh, some of my co workers are using, like, from their childhood. I have no idea what they're talking about. But. <laughs> yeah, Rock and Hide. They were, not a, they were not a famous band in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. My sister actually has joined this, Trudy Lemontaine. She's kind of a dirty girl, so by all means, pick on her as much as you possibly can. But she's saying, when, when I sing Dirty Water, I sing it in a British accent because they actually sang, and I think they were American too, but they uh, they sang the song, In Your Dirty Water. It was kind of ridiculous. Oh. Yeah, I definitely will need to look it up just for educational purposes. Uh, but we'll, we'll need to keep the kids away for my do. If you don't mind. Actually, no, it's it's a relatively clean song. It's not a bad song, I promise you. It is It is child appropriate. Something I'm definitely not, but I'm learning how to be. <laughs> what kind of knife are you cutting with there? Uh, I got some very cool deal. Uh, it's a Komodo, a Komodo knife. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, for some reason, had a like ridiculous sale. It was like 75, 80% off. Uh, so cool. I, I got the whole set. Uh, and then they sent another like, gift certificate for like the additional. So I got like two more. Okay. So now like a full knife set with Komodo. They're pretty good. They they kind of like well, they're I guess I don't know what the term for that, but they kind of one sided. Uh, but yeah. it works great. I love it. So this is this this is my this is my knife. It's a it's a a Robert Kraft by Zwilling. Oh, fancy. Or sorry, Kramer, not Kraft. Robert Kraft is the Boston Patriots jerk face. Yeah, a Kramer. It's a nice knife. But it's, it's funny though when you, when you cook a lot, you know my, my my wife is fantastic and she's she's incredibly supportive, and she also doesn't cook. She does, you know. It's she is um if she if she jumped in the kitchen right now and she said I'm going to make this fantastic dish, she would make it and it would be amazing. But I cook pretty much every single day. No, my wife. I mean, like my wife is a great cook. Uh, we, we do like specialize on different dishes. So yeah. Uh, you know, she, she's amazing with some stuff like soups and everything else. Uh, but when it comes like to meat, steaks, uh, like cloth, uh, generally, I, I take care of that part. So like, we, we take turns. <laughs> so should I be thinking about adding rice soon or no? Uh, let's get maybe like another uh, five minutes. Okay. Uh, and we should be good to go at that point. Uh, but, yeah, now you can do like another rinse uh, to the rice. Uh, and I finished uh, slicing the uh, onions uh, for the salad. So you, you just want to like half circles, uh, fairly thin pieces. Uh, yeah, very cool. We'll just add it to, to the tomatoes. Yeah. So when when I bought my when I bought my chef's knife, it was it wasn't cheap by any stretch. And and you know I, when I say cheap, not by any stretch. You know it was less than you know ten thousand dollars but maybe more than a couple hundred um my wife was like well that's that's a lot to spend on a knife like but baby we're gonna use it forever it's never gonna go away it's the only knife we're gonna buy and she's like okay sweetheart you do that uh, like yeah, two, yeah. two weeks later i'm looking at another knife she's like yeah close the website down or i'm gonna punch you in the face how about that yeah it's i mean like it's Happens all the time. Like you, you get a good knife, but 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 then I need a deboning knife. Uh, but uh, like I need some additional knives, like to do it, like the other cuts to take care of the uh, fish or anything else. So it's uh, it's definitely an addiction. Uh, so 
but yeah, like uh, I definitely like one one day would would love to get some some type of like Damascan <laughs> like mm. Damascan steel like, knife like a uh, handmade. Uh, but uh, you know, do, do you know Ben Hibben? Uh, no, that's not familiar. No. So he, he's on Twitter. He comes from a long line of American knife makers. Um, Blenster, B L E N S T B L E N S T E R mm -hmm. is his Twitter handle, but he comes from a very long line of American knife makers. And I think he's on the show in November, to be honest. But definitely look him up. His 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 family makes good, I mean, good is a really weird way to put it, like phenomenal steel. Yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah. I did watch some TV show about like the sword makers, knife makers. Uh, yes, was fire. Yeah, fascinating. I uh, love it. Uh, and for side sale for tomatoes, uh, like we also don't do anything fancy. That that's the uh, last knife that I got from Kamado. So like when they <laughs> send me a gift card, <laughs> so like, it's like it's the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, go on with your salad, my friend. Uh, yeah, I mean, like for, for tomatoes, nothing fancy. Like you want to just like uh, cut them in half uh, and then just like slice them and put them uh, with the onions. Uh, and, uh, as I said, like it, it only will need uh, pepper and salt for seasoning. Uh, you, you can add a little bit of olive oil, but it's not really needed uh, because both uh, like tomatoes and onions will release juices and it will be just good enough for everything. I'm silently judging you cutting that tomato to see how sharp your knife is, and your knife is very sharp. Good for you, my friend. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Let me see your fingers behind. No, I'm kidding. Oh, my God. Wait, someone judging. Bro. No. And, Aaron, how dare you go on YouTube and look up, look up Dirty Water by Rock and Hide and then sing along in the bathtub. It's glorious. And when I was growing up in Russia, I mean, like, we were fans of like Metallica, Man of War, uh, all their rock bands were really huge, like an ACDC. Can I ask how old you are? Uh, sure. I mean, that's actually a good question because I ask my wife every time my birthday comes. So, like, I ask her, like, how old I am. Uh, was it 21, uh, 2021? So I'm 42, I think. Very cool. So then you're you're kind of master of puppets and up. Yes. Hmm. It's funny to hear the um, and I, and and you know I'm 46, and I'm very much you know get off my lawn like I'm a, I'm an old guy. So you know old Metallica you know, uh, Kill 'Em All and Master you know that, th those were my day. So when people are like, have you heard like whiskey and the goat or that stuff is I'm like, you know. I have, but I don't admit that I have because I think if I admit that I have, then I'm probably using a manscaping tool and drinking lattes. And that's just, it is me. Uh, it's actually time to. There it is. So uh, we about to drop the rice. So before we yep. do that, let's do the last tier uh, and check for uh, seasoning. Yep. Uh, so we want. Uh, the liquid in there to be slightly more like salty than like it would be normal because we will be using rice and rice absorbs a lot of uh, saltiness. So like we want to adjust for that. So I'm very very cumin and maybe a little I would think a little over salted personally, but yeah, I mean like if, if you partially like a, a little bit over salted, you build you should be totally fine because okay. of rice. Uh, and just look at, at the level of the mixture. So, like, you still want to have uh, kind of uh, the liquid covering just a, a little bit of all the uh, all the components. Uh, just and that will be enough for the rice to cook. So, if uh, like well, mine reduced a little bit, so I will just add a little bit more hot water. Okay. Cool. Mm And I'm just gonna drizzle. I'm just gonna drizzle. Or sorry, drizzle this on top, right? I'm not yes. gonna mix it in. Yes, the rice will just put on top, 
and uh, we will not. Uh, oh, I mean, like you're talking about the uh, the water. Uh, like once we get it, well, let's uh, mix it up together. Okay. Get all the flavors. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, I'll check for seasoning again. And who's the heir of offspring? Shut your face. John Budget, you seem like a beautiful human being, but the kids are not all right. I need a little bit more salt. So I'm watching you stir, and, and my consistency is around the same as yours, so that's bringing me joy. Okay, perfect. So at this point, uh, uh, for the rice, we'll just uh, dump all the water it was uh, soaking in. Cool. Yeah, I pretty much have, I would say it's probably a quarter, maybe, maybe a little bit less than a quarter um, absorbed. So it's yeah, so yeah it's, that's normal. And rice will expand, and, that, and that's why you don't want to keep rice in the water for too long because otherwise it will just salt the water and it will not be as delicious. And so, yeah, otherwise. All right, and uh, after that we'll just put the rice uh, like we used to basically as an even layer uh, on top of all the whole mixture. Cool. Uh, and then you can use like spatula to even out, so it will be uh, the same uh, thickness of the layer. Uh, and once you even it out, uh, that's uh, a very important step. Uh, we don't need to raise the heat up uh, because we want uh, all the oils uh, okay. uh, from the from the dish to bubble up through the rice on top, and it will help uh, to make sure that the rice is not uh, like clumping together. We'll keep all the grains separate. So uh, I've raised the, the heat, and once it will start bubbling, so once it will start bubbling like across the the, full, the whole surface, uh, that's when we'll reduce it back to medium, uh, and we'll just cover it. And uh, in ten minutes, we should get it up. Cool. And I think it's I think it's really cool to point out that um, your rice is going to cook fundamentally from steam after it's cooked. It's not going to cook from the liquid that you put into it. I, it took me a while with that. I'm like, no, this is bullshit. The Russians know nothing about rice. Yeah. But uh, I watched a bunch of stuff on YouTube about plov, and there are a billion, billion people putting up recipes about plov. Um, but yeah, you got to just trust. Yeah. Yeah, got to trust the process. Got to trust the program. And to my sister, who's asking what we're making, we are making plov, P-L-O-V. It's fundamentally pilaf, but in, as a very Russian um, kind of dish. Um, yeah, but, there are a lot of variations. So, like in Indian, in your restaurants, you can like order like rice pilaf. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's similar, but like we use a lot of different spices. Uh, like yeah. cook different, still still delicious. So, like what we're cooking is uh, in a traditional way to make, to make plov. I mean, like. Semi-traditional because, like, to make it traditional, we, we would need to, like, to have uh, like a fire, go, like campfire going, like huge. Uh, it's not like that showing, but they have like a specialized uh, cooking pencil specifically for that. And it, it's uh, it's much more complicated, uh, but we just uh, adjusting the technique uh, for our well, purposes or to like what we can use in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. right, so uh, mine is fully blown and uh, and uh, boiling. Uh, so I will reduce uh, the heat to the medium at this point. I will just cover cover the batch of Cool. And I'm going to point out that you haven't taken you have not taken a sip of your wine in a long time. You must be very thirsty, my brother. <laughs> All right. And uh, as long as we didn't have too much uh, liquid in there, uh, we should be totally fine. So we will see, I guess, like in ten minutes. Uh, but but there's another trick uh, to that. So if for some reason, like you will, if you put more liquid that needed uh, like into the mixture, 
uh, and uh, like the you will see that the rice is almost cooked, uh, uh, but like you still have a lot of like bubbling going on. Like obviously you don't want to have a soggy plant. Uh, what you can do is that you can remove uh, uh, the cover from the Dutch oven and okay. just use spatula to make a bunch of holes like, within the rice and the mixture, uh, and it will help to uh, for the uh, for the moisture to evaporate quickly. Uh, quicker, and, and that way you can kind of control uh, the process a little bit. Cool. So, question for you: What is what is another really famous kind of, or not famous? But what's there another really good traditional Russian staple dish? I was actually talking to my wife about it last night. Like, what would it really be famous for uh, on the cooking side? Uh, so, uh, I think that there are at least like one soup. Uh, so, it's a beet soup called borscht. It's borscht is good. Yeah. Uh, and another dish that we thought of, uh, it's called pelmeni, uh, but it's essentially like a traditional Russian dumpling. Uh, so it's, a, it's a similar to ravioli, but uh, they have some additional twists to that. Uh, and uh, I guess why it became so popular in Russia is because like, when it's uh, too cold outside and you have a lot of meat, like you can just prepare like a huge batch of them and, like, and freeze them. And then you can just like eat them throughout the winter for like, several months. So, but those probably will be the, the next two, uh, like the most popular ones. So it will be soup borscht and pomeni. And, and, and I asked that because, you know, Canada, I'm from Canada. <coughs> Canada is only famous for one dish, poutine, right? But, you know, regionally. So I, I, I grew up in Ontario, which is, you know, four hours you know, away from Montreal, eight hours away from Quebec which is where poutine originates from because Ontario doesn't have any real traditional food at all because it's such a, it's such a high melting pot, it's such a high multicultural kind of melting pot that traditional foods are not necessarily, you know, Canadian. They're, you know, they're Indian, they're African, <coughs> they're, um, you know, Middle Eastern, but Quebec has a dish called tortier, which is like a, like a meat pie. It's ridiculously good. I never heard of it. Like, I definitely will check it out. It's, it's interesting, and uh, and I love uh, learning about like regional cuisines because yeah. it's it's fascinating. I mean, it's probably the only thing that unites uh, all, all different people around the world. Like, yeah, it's, like, your love for food and uh, kind of like reflection of their culture and their traditions, like in those dishes that they cook locally, like, local ingredients. Like you know, so it's it's fascinating to me. So, question for you too. I know that, that one of your goals is to appear on Master Chef and cook on Master Chef. So if, if you were called the producer of Master Chef called you tomorrow and said, Evgeny, you're coming on, what are you going to make? What are you going to make? Uh, that probably will be plough, uh, <laughs> but uh, I will need to figure out how the hell to make it on, under an hour because usually, like uh, based on uh, the requirements that I've seen, uh, like they they have uh, like one hour prep time before they go to the judges and show it to them. So okay. like you know, obviously we at the hour mark right now and we are behind like five minutes. So like we'll, we'll need to figure out some additional shortcuts on how to make it happen. But that probably would be the one. Uh, because uh, I, I think it's uh, fairly unique and, uh, and it's delicious. Uh, uh, so, yeah, we, we'll see. But before before I do that, I still need to figure out the bacon piece. Because <laughs> part, like, serious, oh, like, oh, oh, <laughs> baking is dumb. Baking is just one plus one is two. That's all. <laughs> I hate bakers. They're so obnoxious. I'm like, oh, have you configured the uh, viscosity of the cooking temperature of the baking soda erupting? Shut up, you all right, and uh, back to our side salad while uh, we'll just look at about like, a few minutes uh, to be done with, uh, with the rice. So yeah. like, we already sliced uh, the onions and tomatoes in there. So at that point, we'll just add additional, uh, we just uh, season it with salt and pepper okay. uh, and mix it together. Like, yeah, like We already should have some uh, juices, both like from tomatoes and onions on the bottom. So if you want to add a little bit of olive oil, that's fine. If not, uh, that, that would be a more traditional way to go. Uh, so we'll do that right now. So you're not using a traditional kind of salad dressing at all. You're salt, pepper, good. Like, I still don't understand what the hell is Russian dressing. <laughs> like, I see it in the store all the time. And like me and my wife, like look at each other. Like, what is that thing? Like, like it, what do they call it? Russian dressing. Like, to me, Russian dressing is a Catalina dressing, which again makes no sense at all, unless you're at the Catalina mixer. It's like Catalina in French. I, I don't understand what Russian dressing is. 
but I can't imagine anybody in Russia is going, oh, we just call it dressing. I never seen it in Russia. Like, I only seen that Russian dressing in the United States. <clears throat> if anybody from French's is watching, <laughs> Russian dressing makes no sense. It's so not Russian. <laughs> All right, so this is the net. Um, just mix those together. So you have basically an onion thin cut, um, a and tomato onion. thin cut. Yeah. And just pepper and salt. And, it's good. and I want you to know I'm watching you make this salad. I'm being very envious because I ran out of onions and I have no tomatoes. So. <laughs> I'm trying to be all uh, all cool and stuff going, oh, that looks fantastic. Is that what you're making? But at least I didn't burn anything. Yeah, and, and, and the cool part about the, this dish is that, uh, I mean, obviously you want to look uh, for, for steam to go away. So like once the steam will, will go away, there's a chance that you may burn like the meat at the bottom. Sure. Uh, but you cannot burn the rice because it just sits on top of the dish. Uh, nothing will happen to it. It just cooks. For the record, if you're going to touch your Dutch oven, make sure you have what Yevgeny is doing, a covering on your hand so you don't burn your stuff like I just did. <laughs> oh, <very> nice. <laughs> I'm good looking, Yevgeny, not smart. Quite a few birds and cats, so yeah. just I'm not a quick learner. <laughs> Learning is for schmucks. No, I'm kidding. So, how is your sous chef? We we, we we haven't seen him come in at all. Is yeah, he okay? cool. He's still around. Uh, it looks like he's enjoying some video games on on my phone. So. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have about another seven or eight minutes left on that rice. I, mean, I just took a taste. It's stupid good. Extremely good. Yeah, mine still needs probably like another five minutes. Yep. So when you when you, when you plate plov, are you using like fresh herbs or no? Because that fresh herbs seems very fancy. You probably can like use like parsley, yeah, uh, like the, to garnish on top. But um, I mean, traditionally, usually it's like a uh, I don't know, like a typical dish uh, for like, low income. Farmers, so like they would just cook everything uh, together, uh, and then we would like uh, would have like a uh, onions or like parsley or something else just sitting on the side, and people can use it. Uh, so for for garnishing purposes, we definitely can try that. Uh, there's also another uh, type of uh, basil uh, that is very common, like in, in like southern part of Russia. Uh, it's purple in color. I have no idea like what the name of it. Like uh, I think like in the US it's still called basil, but but it's purple. Uh, so that one is very uh, like popular and traditional to serve with that as well. And uh, that type of basil can also be added uh, to the side salad that we prepare. Ask everybody whose planning is going to be prettier, me or yours. Some level of competitions, because so far, <coughs> I, I have to be on. I've, I've learned a lot from you, to be truthful. Um, but I'm very fragile, so I have to win something. So I, I'm hoping when you plate, it looks terrible. But I doubt it. I'll, I'll, I'll try to mess it up in the process. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
<laughs> if, you, if you could do that for me, brother, that'd be nice. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, goodness, people calling me all over the place. So, so when you played this, this is like a family style plating. Yes. So usually like you have a big dish, uh, like before you plate, uh, you would mix all the ingredients together. So like all the meats and vegetables will be incorporated with the rice. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and typically, uh, like they make, um, so it, it generally looks like a like small hill or mound of cloth, and then they make like a small hole like in the center and put like salad in there, and, like vegetables in there, uh, mm -hmm. and everybody would just like take take cloth, take sad sad salad, and it's like family style uh, serving uh, for for that uh, like for sure. So. I have to ask, and, I, and I'm looking something up right now because I don't want to mispronounce the gentleman's name. Okay. I, I watched this gentleman on YouTube, Georgie Kavash. Oh my God. Georgie Kavkas? Kavkas? Thank you for telling me how to pronounce that. This YouTube channel is hilarious. Uh, because the guy doesn't talk much, like he even can no. just just like chubs wine. Chub. <laughs> they do like they bring the huge like pieces of meat, so do yeah. something, and and they just a full cook. bison. The fucker cooked. A, I'm sorry to curse. I'm sorry. The, the man cooked a full bison for goodness sakes. He had the whole o ostrich. Like I don't know where, like, where you can even get ostrich uh, like in, in Canada. Buddy, I, I I think I I I think I live in a pretty accessible place. There's no way I can buy an ostrich. There's no way. Yeah, but he's a channel. I, I love it. I, I watch it all the time. Uh, so he, he's really uh, interesting. He has like tons of uh, subscribers on the channel as well. I watch him every day, <laughs> every day. He and his buddy s sitting inside the mountains. He's like, oh, we're gonna put some vegetables in here. He's like, pour a glass of wine, chug a glass of wine. You know, cut vegetables, put in vegetables. I watched one episode where he was he was cutting something and then it stopped, and then he came back and he was like in a in a full cast because I guess he had cut himself while he was. He's the greatest human being there is. Yeah, but the, the, that's very traditional way of cooking, like in, in like southern parts of Russia and some, <laughs> some of the countries that are now independent. Uh, and he has like a lot of uh, like uh, specialized tools and like spe specific components and plays there to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure he like I don't remember I've seen him cooking pool, but I'm sure he did that on one of their like episodes for sure. Yeah, I so I, I looked at the at the tandoor that he was cooking in, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy a tandoor. You know, I, I'm I'm gonna cook meat like 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 Yorgi does. And then I, I looked at his custom tandoor. His custom tandoor was like twenty seven hundred U.S. dollars. And then I said. I'm not going to be cooking in a tandoor like like Yorgi does. There's no way. Yeah, if you would need few like cooking uh, uh, vessels that he is using on his show, it probably yeah. would be cheaper to buy a ticket uh, like a fly to Georgia and buy it off the street there and fly back. Right. Yeah. So yeah, because they're extremely heavy. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they. Cost more, probably like three, four times uh, more expensive if you buy them here. But. All right, so my rice is actually almost done. Uh, so I'm out of the way. So I actually have a, a little bit more liquid. How, how should the how should the texture kind of be? Should it be less liquid? Uh, do you still see it bubbling at the top? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then uh, just open uh, open the cover. Okay, and we'll use the tip that I just shared with you like a few minutes ago, and just like poke holes in the whole thing, and just let it go for now, like four or five minutes, and you should be good to go. Now I'll just uh, reduce mine to low for now. Because I will say, the flavor is stupid good. And it's amazing because you use like so, so like uh, little ingredients, and it's you know. really delicious. It's not like you went to some fancy place and got some fancy cut of meat and 
Okay, it's 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 very simple, uh, but it's absolutely delicious. So at, at the end of the day, it's chicken, cumin, and salt, and vegetables. You know, it's phenomenal. It's really, really, really tasty. Last week I did a show about Sloppy Joe. And I've always been kind of skeptical about Sloppy Joe. Have you cooked Sloppy Joe before? Is that a, uh, I only heard reference to Sloppy Joe like in reference to hot dogs when they put like chili on top. Is that one? Kind of, yeah. Sloppy Sloppy Joe is basically thickened, you know, um, bolognese. Mm. You know, it's like, it's, it's like a, a, a looser bolognese, but the uh, the person I was cooking with, Kia, she put tomato juice or sorry, um, pickle juice in the mixture, which made it phenomenal. It was super wow. super good. Um, and I would never compare one dish to another because you know I'm I'm a really um, fair guy, but this is incredible. Incredible. It's pretty interesting, but at the same time, I, I'm kind of like I definitely I haven't watched that episode, so like I definitely will take a look at that. But I'm curious, like what type of uh, pickling jar or like whatever like brand you use because the like, liquids can be so different depending yeah. on the style. I used um I used garlic pickles. I just opened a jar of pickles and just went pour it in, good to go. And to my sister calling it hamburger slop, it brings me back to my childhood. That's fundamentally true to what it was, was hamburger slop, but very much on a different scale. Very tasty. When we were kids, my parents would cook, or my mother, let's say, would cook, but she would take like a pound of beef and put it in, a, in, a, in an electrical or an electric frying pan with a tin of vegetable soup and maybe a couple you know, maybe maybe fresh vegetables, most likely not. And it would basically cook down. And, and my sister and I used to call it hamburger slop. But um, it wasn't hamburger slop, Shirty. How dare you? Yeah, like, I mean, like, obviously, like, I grew up uh, in Soviet Union. So, like, yeah. we, we, like my family loved to cook. Uh, but because of that, uh, because of, uh, like, <laughs> much was available, uh, somehow, like, we... Like I managed to learn about cooking uh, different organ meats, like instead of like different cuts and stuff like that. And uh, but right now it's really cool because uh, like you can potentially use some organ meats, like uh, chicken, uh, chicken parts, uh, or even, even brains and all like uh, liver, etc. Uh, and it was a staple in our household uh, back then, and it still at least tastes delicious to me. So. Well, meat, food is food, right? Yeah. How was it? Perfect. Start if you're ready. Yeah. Two more, brother. Yeah, you I'm are the ready. unicorn chef, so the, it's all up to you, my friend. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, I'll turn the heat off. Uh, and at that point, so like once your rice is ready, uh, mm -hmm. so the first step uh, we'll just uh, we'll mix all the ingredients together. Uh, and if you'll manage to catch. Uh, the, the head of garlic, you can remove that. Some people like it because at this point it should be almost disintegrated, so like very soft and smoothy. Fair. Okay. Yeah, I, I pulled that out a couple of minutes ago. Okay. I found mine, so I'll take it out. And you can use it for garnish. I'll, I'll save it for now, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, sorry, I'm just I'm just cleaning. I know cleaning is not man's work at all. I'm <laughs> glad my wife is not here. I'm glad my wife isn't here either. If my sister loves me, she will not tell my wife. So we shall see. She probably already texted her the link to this uh, stream. It's only a matter of a uh, couple hours, I guess. You know, I've, I kind of live my life in trouble. Oh my God, 
it smells delicious. Yeah, but they didn't burn anything. So. Yeah, I didn't burn rice, so Twitter can shut your face. So I'm going to use these earth earthenware bowls. Is that okay? Uh, yes, that's yeah. fine. Oh, Mike, that's hilarious. So my, my wife just uh, came in with my younger son to taste the dish. Uh, oh, yeah. Apparently, she was streaming the whole thing all along. So like, oh, yeah. it's me saying that like things up. My wife is not here. <laughs> if, I, if I got you in trouble at all, I apologize. Mm -hmm. It's 100% my fault. <laughs> it's responsibility. No, I think she's still smiling. So I think, I think, I think they do. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just put a uh, cloth in a big dish. Uh, okay. And just to make it look a little bit fancier, uh, we'll just make a little bit space in the middle uh, for the uh, side salad. Okay. I'm going to throw a little bit of pepper on mine, if that's, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just uh, season it after your taste. And I'm going to take a fancy picture for Twitter. Cool. See, I told you, you were going to show me up from the get-go. Look at this plating. Goodness gracious. God bless you. No, no. Just... I mean, it's very traditional. So usually, like they, they put like they, they have a huge plate. They just like dump the, the cloth in, into the plate. They just make the uh, in the center and dump the salad in there. Uh, and it's, like if you would have uh, the salad, you would see that the, we actually got uh, quite a bit of juice uh, at the bottom, yeah. uh, and that's just like onion, tomatoes, uh, and like seasoned like pepper and salt juice. And it helps to cut through fattiness of the cloth uh, and helps uh, with, I guess, overall experience of eating this amazing dish. So let's, let's you and I take a picture of our dish. Okay, Alex, sous chef. Sous chef indeed. Take the, this one away. Because I don't think this could have ever come together without Alex. Figure out how you can do it. Smile, big boy. Thank you. And then a taste. I've tasted it a couple times. But let's see. I'll let my son taste it if I find the spoon. Just try. Shut up. This is so good. Oh, Uncle Mike, it's good. 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 Thumbs, one thumb up or two thumbs up? Yeah! <laughs> Atta boy. This has been phenomenal. Oh, think, yeah. uh, Mike, I'm glad that your dish worked out as well and you didn't burn the rice. So, uh, <laughs> Goodness. We did, we did you and me both. I, li I like that food kind of transcends culture. And I like that you can kind of learn from somebody because, like I said, I've never ever cooked this dish before, and I promise you, I'm going to cook this dish again literally the next week. It's in the rotation, so thank you. No, my pleasure, Mike. Let's thank go. you for showing me. Having the video, <coughs> cooking together. Alex, if I were you, I would ask your dad for at least a hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. Do you know how much we spend on roll blocks? Yeah. Like, dude, it's like another hundred. Then I would ask your dad for at least two dollars <laughs> to be the, the, the sous chef. Thank you. Um, I would ask for everybody to go to uh, your local SPCA 
donate your time, donate your money. <coughs> they need us, we need them. And Yevgeny, if you could talk about your charity one more time, my friend. Yes, absolutely. So the, 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 my favorite charity is uh, Old Center Kitchen. Uh, that has been led by uh, superhero uh, chef uh, uh, Andres. Uh, and they do amazing work on all their uh, like relief efforts. Like So whenever it's a hurricane or any type of disaster, uh, he has an amazing team of chefs that comes in and helps out like with the preparation of food uh, and like basically feeding the community because the food is essential and that's one of the main things that will keep us going forward. Yeah. So yes, if you can, please donate. Thank you. Again, and if, if you can follow you getting on Twitter, don't follow me because I talk a lot about ketchup. <laughs> Thank you for watching Unicorn Chef. If you've made anything or if you just want to talk, Use the hashtag Unicorn Chef on all your social media, and we'll see you next week with an amazing. Right. Another, another I, 